Hi everyone, welcome to Stogie Geeks News for January 22nd, 2016. I'm your host, Paul Asadorian, joined on the lines via Skype by Mr. Will Cooper. Welcome, Will. Hey, Paul, how's it going? It's going fantastic. Always excited to talk about the news in the cigar industry, and we will get right into it with our first story. In the news, Sam Lucia departs General Cigar. This comes after Sam had departed Oliva. Is that correct, Will? Right? He was at Oliva, did his own thing, went to General, and now he's leaving General. Did I get that right? Yeah. yeah Oliva to his own thing to General. Nice. And now he's leaving General, and what are his plans? Do we know? Yeah, so he, um, he is taking his brands back and will be looking for a distributor to distribute them. But he is, uh, he is leaving General Cigar. So it was a unique arrangement um, when Sam joined General. Um, and a lot of people thought it was an acquisition mm-hmm. where General actually acquired his companies. It, it turns it's out that not, that, Yeah, it's not, right? If he's taking it, his stuff with him. <laughs> right. And, and basically, Sam was actually uh, on Cigar Chat back in December and had said basically, look, that General, um, the Gen- it's his brands. Um, he didn't turn over a percentage of the, of the brand to them. Um, they licensed it and they distributed it from him. So... He is uh, leaving and taking them with him. Now, it sounds like it's an amicable split. It, and mm-hmm. Sam actually just did an interview with Dave Burke from Cigar Jukebox, and it really sounded like that Sam just felt it wasn't a fit and it was probably getting lost in the bigger scheme of things with the general portfolio, which, you know, they have a lot of brands, and he, he kind of understood it. Um, but he seemed very positive about his experience he had there. So it does seem on the surface like this. It, it may not be anything more than that, and um, it will be interesting to see now, when Sam left Oliva, you remember there was an injunction filed, and he there had to stay out. Controversy, the, correct? Oh yeah, he was out of the. He was on the sidelines for almost two years. Mm-hmm. So I don't. It doesn't sound like anything like that is happening right now, and it sounds like he, uh, you know, based on the arrangements. So I think that's a positive for me. He's a very popular guy, Sam. He um, is, yeah, and he's got some interesting blends, and I'm I'm curious to see what he comes out with. You know, now that he's on his own. Yeah, me too. Me too. Excellent. Next up in the news, House of Emilio rebrands as Boutiques United. We've covered House of Emilio uh, cigars and all of their uh, kind of partner or sub-brands quite a bit on this show. And now they've taken a bold move and they've rebranded. Yeah. um, You know, so really last year, um, Gary Griffith, who was the face of Emilio, he retired. Um, he's He's left the industry. Um, and you know, Gary was so much, I think the face of that company, the face of the Emilio brand. He was, we, when we interviewed him, he sounded like, to me, it almost sounded like a startup incubator, right? It was yeah. that similar kind of a, kind of a model. Right. So he leaves and now it's kind of, well, Gar- that face isn't there anymore. And probably Gary, Gary, unique character. You can't really replace him. So you have four brands out there right now. You have Nomad, 1502, Ezra Zion, and Emilio. And they really always cooperated together. Kind of, mm-hmm. And we've heard Gary even talk about this as well as Fred and Enrique. They kind of all have cooperated. So I think by changing the name, it kind of moved away from Gary. And it kind of represented who the, the model of these four um, companies are. Um, you know, there's been some reductions in the brands in House of Emilio, but I think these four are going to be around for a while. So they're I gonna, think they're going to stay yeah. under Boutiques United and and hopefully continue to uh, to be prosperous for them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think there's some questions about the actual Emilio brand itself, um, mm-hmm. where they're they're going to go through some changes, I think too. But, uh, um, you know, I think they'll be okay going forward with this. Excellent. Next up is a brand that we talked about, a line actually, that we talked about on the most recent Stogie Geek show. I reviewed one of the cigars in this line. And it's very timely with the Super Bowl being just around the corner. Uh, Camacho is releasing a a Ditka special game day edition coming for the big game. Yes, it's for the the big game. Um, So, uh, yes, uh, as uh, folks know, the NFL championships being held in Santa Clara. Um, and you know, Mike Ditka's had a line of cigars, uh, for quite a while, but this is the first one they're doing to commemorate the championship game. And obviously it's a, it's a 50th, uh, edition of that. So they are releasing a, um, a cigar and it's in a very familiar shape. It's in that 1118, uh, shape that Camacho, the parent 
brand of Ditka is known for. So it's that 1118 uh, 6 by 48 54 size. And, uh, which blends, I love, by the way. I love which, the 1118 size. I think, yeah. it's, I think it's a fantastic size. Um, I, and we interviewed Christian. We talked in uh, quite some a great detail about that size and the evolution of that size. Um, and it's still available today in the CLE brands. And it's interesting to see it come out in this uh, Ditka uh, Game Day Special Edition. Yeah. Yep. And they've kept the 1118 name, which was actually from Christian Aroa's mother's birthday. They actually had it. Um, That's right. But, yeah, so it definitely has ties back to Christian. Yeah, yeah. Um, Blend is a Nicaraguan uh, wrapper of a Brazilian Matafina binder and uh, fillers from the Dominican and Honduras. I'm assuming it's, they haven't disclosed where it's being made, but I'm assuming it's being made in Honduras where most of the Camacho stuff's made. Um, this should be hitting uh, the shelves relatively soon. So, um, and it's going to be packaged also in coffins. So it's going to have that Liberty shape and it's mm-hmm. going to have um, Liberty type of packaging, but it's going to be a Ditka. And it's going to be in a coffin, like you said, like the Liberty. Be, yeah. Yep. It's going to be in the coffin and the coffins are going to be packaged 20 in a big box. Um, so, um, yeah. And, so and what's the release date? The release date I've been told is going to be right before the Super Bowl. I think probably by the time this airs, they'll start hitting the, sh- the shelves. Okay. Perfect. Well, I can't wait to smoke that one. And thanks, everyone, for watching the Stogie Geeks News. That concludes the news for this week. Make sure you check out the Stogie Geek Show every Thursday night, 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time. StogieGeeks.com forward slash live is where you can watch that and participate in our chat room. And make sure you check out all of the news and reviews on Cigar-Coop.com. Thanks, everyone, for watching.